Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we talked a lot about state management and in today's episode we're going to look at the circular progress indicator to basically come up with a little bit of a, uh, a custom rating view here. So if we quickly take a look at the JSON here, we can see within each product, um, this is the product JSON object, within each product we have a rating object and it has a rate, which I guess is a value, and then a count of the number of reviews, you know, I guess in total, right? Because these are all products that people can purchase. So there is a little bit of a, you know, rating system built in, like you would normally see in other, you know, e-commerce platforms, data, that kind of stuff. So we don't have this in our model yet. We will add that in. And then uh, we're also taking a look at our progress indicator here. Um, this is the material design docs. I'll link this in the description here, but we can see that there's basically a bunch of different kinds of ways we can use uh, a progress indicator in either a linear fashion or a circular fashion here. And we're opting to use the circular one in a determinant way to uh, actually end up getting something that uh, you know looks like the UI behind us. But the main two things to recognize here is that there is something called a track and then there is something called an indicator as the anatomy of these uh, views here. And so you can see here the track is kind of the background view and the indicator is the more solid view that kind of you know denotes progress. So if we take a look at this UI over here, we can see that we have a circle progress indicator. I've added a text view in there to actually kind of write what the actual value is um, for the rating. And then you can see the two different colors there, right? And so looking at the code here, um, since our star rating is gonna be out of five, we're gonna multiply everything by 10 and get round numbers because these views don't work with decimal numbers, right? So we're gonna say that the max for our view is 50, and then our progress is 42, which would correlate to 4.2 out of five stars, right? And that's why 4.2 comes up there. Um, you know, if someone had a pretty bad rating of like 3.0, we would change this to 30, and then you can see in the UI here, you see that now there's basically, you know, less of it filled in, right? Because it's just further away from 100%. So we're going to go ahead and just change that back to 42. But as noted here, there is the indicator color. We've changed that to be our purple 700, which is that deeper purple. And then there is the track color that we can assign here, which is purple 100, which is that lighter color there. Um, not too much else going on here, just a few constraints to put it in the right spot, give it an ID. And then the text view here is very simple. It's just constrained to basically all edges to the rating view itself. So we wanna have it inside of that rating view. And we just have a text color to match the text color for the indicator color. We change the text size a little bit, maybe make it even a little smaller if we have difficulty with that, but I don't think we will. I think we can kind of see it pretty nicely there. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically about it. So we're gonna wire this one up inside of our epoxy model product item uh, XML, which is done in our UI product epoxy model, which gives us a UI product um, to actually work with. And if you haven't been following the channel so far, uh, or this season so far, this class just has a product and then it has a bunch of UI information. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to update our product here. So our product is a data class. We're just gonna create another data class that's called a rating. So let's go with value, which will be a double. And then we can say um, number of ratings, which will be an integer, right? But now obviously we need to add this in here and we'll say val rating. Perfect, so we've added it into our product class, which is really helpful because we can get our UI, not that, sorry. We can get our UI up and running here, right? So um, we do have a little bit of a shimmer layout. So in basically this case here, we're going to say our, what was it called? The rating, yep. So the rating indicator progress is going to equal our UI product dot product dot rating dot value times 10. I'm gonna multiply it by 10 again, and then we're just gonna call round to int. So that'll hopefully just round to the nearest integer. And then we can say our rating uh, text view dot 
not progress in this case, text is going to equal uh, basically this. And we're just going to go ahead and copy that. And we'll put it in this string like so. Uh, and then that will just kind of spit out our value. So wonderful. We've set the progress of the indicator and then we set the text of that text view. So now our model here, our epoxy model is all set up to basically look something like that when we get our data. However, now we need to, inside of our product, when we're fetching the products repository, right? We, uh, we have a particular product service that calls get all products and then we map them um, from basically the network product to a product. Uh, so they're mapped properly. Let's go ahead and just take a look at this. We see there is a little bit of an error here, right? We could see that and it's basically saying no value passed in for rating. We will just say our rating is going to equal the rating, which is the one inside of our product. So the product.rating, that's not too big. So we could probably just, um, you know, nest this here. The value is going to be the network product dot rating dot rate. And then we can say, sorry, not the, the number of ratings is going to be our network product dot rating dot count. Lovely. And that's going to work just fine. Uh, the other thing here is the definition of our network product actually already had this rating content in it. So I just want to cover that really quickly. So this is our network product, right? It's within our network package. And this basically describes the structure of the JSON that we were going to receive. I actually thought we didn't have this inside of our model and I would have had to add it, but I guess I added it from the very beginning um, and just we never had it in our domain model. So. Um, that's good. That's all good and well. That's really fun. Less work for us today. I think that's all we need to do. So let's just go ahead and run it and see how it turns out. And as this is coming to life here, uh, I would definitely appreciate uh, a subscription if you guys are brand new. Definitely like the video to help me out here. I think it's kind of a fun UI uh, because the traditional rating bar here, rating view thing that has the stars is just like absolutely disgusting. It just does not look good at all in my opinion. So I wanted to find something that looked a little bit better and I figured let's repurpose this. And come into life here, we can see a loading state here and then look at that. We can actually see our ratings here and it looks, um, it looks like pretty good. It doesn't, it definitely doesn't look like too bad. I like the idea that you can clearly see, you know, 2.1, 4.6, like you can clearly see the difference here. Um, which is really cool. I do think I might change the location of it. Maybe we'll put it to the right of this um, text, the, the price here, but you know, the, the actual idea, the concept here, it works. All right, folks, and here we are. Modified a little bit of the constraints here on the progress indicator to now put it over here in the middle. We now have it in between the product price and then this little, you know, add to cart and in cart view you know, combination thing over here. It sits there. Something with the indicator size here of 32 dp was how we were able to basically modify the actual ring size, the full on diameter between, um, or the diameter of the ring. So we were able to control a little bit of the size and that is super helpful. I think we could probably even get this a little smaller if we went maybe like, you know, 10 on that and I don't know, maybe 28 here or something. Um, let's see if we rerun that quickly how that looks. Yeah, so it gets a little bit smaller, which is kind of nice. Um, I like to keep it a little con condensed here, but uh, outside of that, the actual thing itself looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Feel free to request some other uh, content that you'd like to see here within the application. Otherwise, we'll just continue on here and drop a comment that says real fan down in the comments. Let me know you made it all the way through this video. Greatly appreciated. Again, feel free to subscribe if you are brand new so you don't miss out on new content. All the code is available on GitHub. Like the video to help me out a little bit, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.